Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India To completely understand the function of a protein, it is important to look beyond its expression pattern and identify its potential interacting partners and determine the interaction dynamics. Because most of the systems are not only governed with a specific molecule, but rather how their entire interaction network is built. To study the interaction between two binding partners in the SPR experiment, one partner is attached to the surface and other is passed over the surface in a continuous flow. The interaction of ligand and analyte is measured by the SPR instrument as a change in refractive index over time and response observed is directly proportional to the change in mass concentration close to the surface. In the previous lecture, we have performed a lab session and completed the immobilization of anti beta 2 microglobulin antibody on the chip surface of CM5 chip. We will now move forward and perform the binding analysis of anti beta 2 microglobulin with beta 2 microglobulin protein. As I mentioned, we are talking to you about a standard protein and antibody pair. However, the same steps, same procedures could also be followed for protein of your interest. However, experimental design considerations may have to be modified as per the protein and antibody pair requirements. Let us continue our lab session and watch how to perform the binding analysis of anti beta 2 microglobulin with its protein in the lab setting. We will go into the second session now and we will use our immobilized chip for a binding experiment. So here we will first prepare a template for the binding experiment. A binding experiment actually deals with screening or a single concentration screen of different compounds on the immobilized ligand and look for its ability to interact with the target that is immobilized on the surface. Before we go ahead with the binding experiment, let us understand some important considerations. During sample injection, the analyte is injected over the surface with a constant flow and concentration. Analyte in the sample binds to the immobilized ligand on the surface, the mass on the surface changes and a response is recorded. After sample injection, buffer flows over the surface to allow monitoring of analyte dissociation from the ligand. Regeneration, as already discussed by Dr. Srinivas, is the process of removing bound analyte from the ligand on the sensor chip surface after analysis of a sample. Efficient regeneration, which means removing bound analyte without affecting the ligand activity, is crucial to a successful assay. If the regeneration is incomplete, or the binding activity of the surface is reduced, the performance of the assay is impaired. The choice of conditions for regeneration is dictated by the stability and nature of the ligand and analyte. In today's binding experimental setup, we will be using HIPIS EP Plus as the running buffer. We will be preparing three different concentrations of beta 2 microglobulin protein which are 
8.5 nanomolar, 42.5 nanomolar, and 85 nanomolar for evaluating its binding with the antibody having 8.5 nanomolar concentration in duplicate. These three concentrations will be referred to as low, medium and high. Contact times between the sample and the sensor surface should be sufficient to give confidently measurable response levels without compromising screening throughput. Contact times of 1 to 2 minutes are usually sufficient for a binding experiment. Here, we will provide a contact time of 60 seconds at the flow rate of 10 microliter per minute with a dissociation time of 60 seconds. An ideal regeneration condition is the one where analyte response of the same concentration is constant after repeated injections. Today, we will be using 10 millimolar glycine pH 2.5 for regeneration of the surface. We will now proceed with our binding experiment protocol. File. Before making the template, we will open the file. Wizard again. Binding analysis. New. Identify the flow path as 2 minus 1 as we have done our immobilization on 2 minus 1. Chip will be CM5 that is docked already. We will not have ligand capture. Sample and regeneration. We will go to the next tab. Here we are not using any conditioning cycle. We will start with the startup cycles. Startup cycles are cycles of buffer uh, used for equilibrating the system. So here basically buffer is used as analyte. So we can type as H H B S E P plus buffer and from the pull down menu we select three cycles generally for binding experiments three cycles are selected going to the next tab for setting up a binding we need to specify the contact time as 60 seconds default flow rate of 10 microliter per minute dissociation time of any minute or any second by default we can consider 60 seconds the regeneration solution we would prefer here would be 10 milli molar glycine pH 2.5 with the default contact time of 30 seconds flow rate of 30 microliter per minute and with no stabilization time we go to the next tab here we need to fill in the name of all single concentration compounds so here we would select 
our analyte as beta 2 m just that we have one analyte we will take it in three different concentrations so we will name as low beta 2 m medium and beta 2 m high so low indicates lower concentration medium medium concentration high concentration and we will go to the next tab we will select prime before run and normalize is not required here because the chip is already immobilized and we will go with the default temperatures and we will go to the next tab here we will not select a micro titer plate and this is our rack positions for a binding experiment here we have at the C1 position HBS EP plus buffer for three different startups we have three concentrations of analytes high medium and low and we have the regeneration solution here which is 10 millimolar glycine pH 2.5 and we will prepare our solutions and start the binding experiment. We will now work on the reagents required for the binding analysis of anti-beta-2 microglobulin with beta-2 microglobulin protein. We will be using HIPIS EP plus as the running buffer which will also be used for the initial startup cycles. We will dilute the stock solution of protein that is 100 microgram per ml in the running buffer HIPIS EP plus to prepare 100 microliter of three different concentrations that is 85 nanomolar, 42.5 nanomolar and 8.5 nanomolar which are referred to as high, medium and low concentrations in the experiment. We will also include one zero nanomolar concentration in the experiment which will be nothing but the running buffer. For the regeneration of the surface, we have prepared glycine HCl pH 2.5 as the regeneration solution. We have transferred all the solutions in the specialized tube starting from the startup, beta 2m concentrations starting from 85 nanomolar, 42.5 nanomolar. 8.5 nanomolar and 0 nanomolar. The regeneration solution is placed in this glass vial. We will now insert these tubes into the appropriate rack and then into the system to start with the binding analysis of anti-beta-2 microglobulin with beta-2 microglobulin protein. We will eject the rack now to insert new vials. Eject rack. And take the plate out of the sample rack. And we will fill it with the binding vials. So the vial positions are filled with different samples. As you can see on the screen, 
the startup is here so beta to m medium beta to m low beta to m high are put at their respective positions and a while for regeneration of 10 millimolar glycine pH 2.5 is here now we close the rack and will be inserted in the sample compartment by ejecting the rack compartment inserting the plate next to tab So again we need to do all these checks, check the time, the estimated runtime of 38 minutes and we have sufficient amount of buffer and we will now start the experiment. We will save this template as binding. save now we will save the result file again as binding and now the experiment has started shows running binding analysis with an estimated time of 38 minutes system is priming now and once the finish of the binding experiment we will take a look at the data Before we analyze the binding data from the experiment, let us look at a typical sensogram for binding between a ligand and an analyte. A sensogram as shown here is a plot of response against time showing the progress of interaction. This curve is displayed on the system during the course of experiment. We observe the baseline followed by the injection of analyte which leads to increase in the binding response during the association phase. Just after the stop of the sample injection, we observe report point which records the response on a sensogram at a specific time averaged over a short time window. This is followed by dissociation phase 
regeneration and then back to baseline. We will now proceed to analyze the data obtained from binding of anti-beta-2 microglobulin with beta-2 microglobulin protein. After finish of our binding experiment, by double click on the file, The file is open now, you can see here from our binding experiment which shows all sensograms here. So here the green ones are our startup. So we have set up three or five different startups and the red ones are our actual data from beta 2 microglobulin. What we will do is, we will highlight only our sample data. And now you see the data for beta 2m. We go on tool, sensogram adjustment. report point on the y adjustment baseline and say ok now our data is baseline to zero if we want we can as well go on tool color sample and we will see the different samples in different colors with the legend on one side of the screen. Here we have low, medium and high concentrations of beta 2 microglobulin injected over anti beta 2m we could subtract or delete the regeneration area cut and now we can see our different concentrations of beta 2m with one of them in duplicate so there is definitely binding of the beta 2m to anti beta 2m antibody in a dose dependent manner the data can also be shown in form of a bar chart with all our red startup runs and green as our sample runs. Here we will highlight the sample runs only and see cycle 7, 8 and 9 are our low, medium and high concentration data which are dose dependent binding going to another tab we can see the relative responses of each molecule from the binding 
add 4 for the duplicates and medium at 29 and high at 52. With this, we will conclude our binding session and we prepare now for a kinetics experiment. I hope you are able to follow the lab demonstration sessions. These protein interactions are identified using wide array of applications. However, what is also required is an understanding of the extent to which these interactions actually occur. Therefore, performing protein-protein interaction studies and calculating their kinetic values becomes very crucial. We will continue the lab demonstrations and our discussion on SPR experiments for the kinetics analysis in the next lecture. Thank you.